And here we are again. I'm not surprised at this year's early exit as I believe the Knicks are truly what the second seed represents, the second best team in the conference, however it still hurts. But while this is irritating, we did see promising things from both Joel Embiid on one leg and Tyrese Maxey in a playoff setting against a great defense, so I feel pretty good about those two headed into the most important offseason in franchise history. The Sixers can have up to about $65 million in cap space depending on whether or not they guarantee Paul Reed's deal. Regardless, they will have significant wiggle room to improve this team and many avenues to do it. On top of this cap space, the Sixers have five tradable first round picks now. So if it isn't a free agent, a big swing could be made via trade to fill up that cap space. Yes, they have to pay Tyrese Maxey, but due to his cap hole being so low, the Sixers will be able to use their cap space and then proceed to sign Tyrese and go over the cap with his bird rights. It's going to be a wild offseason in Philly and around the league, and today I'm going to be going over some potential moves, big and small, that could help this team finally get to where they want to go. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. I'm going to start off with the big fish because that's what everyone wants to hear, obviously. While we don't know who's going to ask for a trade, we do know two people who will be hitting free agency, Paul George and LeBron James. I'm going to start off with PG because that's more realistic, but LeBron to Philly has been close before, but we'll get to that. Paul George is a great fit basketball wise, but I really wouldn't want an older star unless it's LeBron. Especially with how Maxi looked these playoffs, I think taking the Nuggets route of trying to find elite role players to put with them could be the solution. If you can get a LeBron or even a Jimmy because that's swirling now, I'm fine with that or another younger star, but I think the Denver route can be great too. As for Paul George, I just really don't want to pay an injury prone 34 year old max money when we could fill out a team with his 50-ish million annually he would receive. The theoretical basketball fit is great as I said, but he is 34 and I would much, much rather sign two starters and a good bench piece with that 50-ish million. Before I discuss LeBron, I guess we'll talk about this Jimmy Butler prospect that's a thing all of a sudden. I highly doubt Jimmy leaves Miami, but if he were to, I would not be opposed to a reunion. I would not like to deplete all assets for an older star, but I would be more okay with this than Paul George. Now for LeBron James, and this would obviously be a home run. Yes, he is actually much older than Paul George, but LeBron is the definition of the exception to the rule. Another caveat that makes this so elite is how good Maxi is off the ball and how good he could be with the gravity of both LeBron and Embiid present. Think about what Harden was doing, except it's LeBron James. As long as Embiid can stand up straight, LeBron, Maxi, Embiid is a championship for as long as LeBron wants to play, and I think he might see that as well as the opportunity to be paid in full and really consider Philly. The last time he hit free agency, the Sixers were solidly his second choice, despite LA being the obvious destination. Oh yeah, the Sixers also had the 16th pick in the draft, which to me feels like the perfect spot for Bronny to both still be there and not having to reach too much. For the record, regardless for many franchises, a year of LeBron is worth a mid first, but anyways. The Sixers have an opportunity for LeBron to win, play with his son, and get paid, and I don't know what other landing spot has all three of those on the table. I think LeBron, nothing else considered, would like to be in LA, but I also think he's started to think after having to carry teams at his advanced age. Okay, now that I'm done fantasizing about LeBron, let's get into some trade candidates because this could be the most advantageous path. While yes, you'll have to give up assets, you won't have to use 50 million in cap, rather 20 to 35 or 40, allowing for the addition of a star as well as role players. The first guy I want to discuss is Mikael Bridges, and this would be amazing for many reasons I just laid out. Before I discuss, yes, I'm aware that the Nets declined an insane offer for Bridges this season, but I think they've had somewhat of a reality check and will look to capitalize on him before they have to pay him. And that's the beauty of this move. Mikael Bridges is making 23 million next season and 25 the year after that, so the Sixers would get a perfect fitting 3 and D wing who has developed more creation in his game while also being able to remain flexible and build a deep team. As we know, Mikael Bridges went to Villanova and was selected by the Sixers who his mom worked for and was traded on draft night. I and many were devastated and being able to right this wrong while also remaining flexible would be huge. 
I think the cost will be three firsts and I do it. You're not only trading for Mikhail, but also flexibility compared to say a Paul George. The next name I want to speak on is Brandon Ingram. And while I know his playoffs weren't great, this actually works in Philly's favor. His asking price likely dips due to a stretch where he was injured. This is a six foot nine dynamic scorer and playmaker who could fit seamlessly into the Sixers offense. He would basically be what we wanted Tobias Harris to be. He is still only 26 years old and is making 36 million next season and in at least more discounted extension than it would have been is also in the cards after this slump. B.I. is an insanely underrated playmaker and I can't emphasize how much I love his fit with this squad. These star additions would help this team greatly, but I also want to discuss the possibility of taking the Denver route, putting perfectly fitting role players next to your star guard and big. Funnily enough, my first suggestion as far as who these guys could be would be KCP from Denver. Malik Monk could also be a good target, and guys like Gary Trent Jr. will be floating around as well. While this free agency class isn't the greatest, there are still plenty of elite role players to fill out this Sixers squad. The Sixers do have a number of free agents from this team as well, and at the right price I'd like Kelly Oubre and Buddy Heald back, and I believe they will probably get around 10-ish a year. The other two guys that must return should they remain playing are Kyle Lowry and Nicholas Batum. They were integral parts of this team, and I would love them off the bench next season. Campaign and DeAnthony Melton are also guys who I'd like back at the right price, and I think Melton in particular could be had at a discount due to his injury struggles this season. No matter what route the Sixers take, this roster will be looking very, very different come July. I haven't been this excited for an offseason since 2019, and all we can hope is it doesn't turn out to be the disaster that it was the last time the Sixers had this level of flexibility. Basically, just don't give out the two worst contracts in franchise history, and we should be fine. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell. I'd really, really appreciate it. Comment down below your thoughts, you know, what you think the Sixers need to do this offseason. I know a lot of people hate the idea of Brandon Ingram, but I promise you guys he's going to bounce back next season. It's a contract year, and he is not as bad as, you know, again, man, he was dealing with injuries. He would be such a perfect fit. I, I you know, that's kind of my polarizing take right now. A lot of people don't want Brandon Ingram. A lot of people think he'd be a skinny Tobias Harris. That is not true. They are very, very different players. Brandon Ingram is much better. And we could have him, you know, we could probably extend him on like a Porzingis deal where you get him for like 30 mil each, 30 mil a year. I mean, 30 mil each. I mean, I guess, you know, I mean, y'all got the message. But we could have him on a 30 instead of having to pay a third star 50. And then we're also paying Maxine and Bede 50. It would allow us to remain flexible going into the future as well and into the deep future because it would probably be a four year extension. But regardless of what happens, if this team isn't looking significantly, significantly better next season, Daryl Morey needs to be fired into the sun. And that's going to officially wrap this one up. Oh, I didn't speak on Tobias Harris at all. If they resign him, I'm no longer a fan. I'm so serious. I'm I'm taking my talents to Golden State. I am so, so serious. If they re-sign Tobias Harris, I'm done with this franchise, and I'm going to end it on that. Peace.